Chapter Twenty Eight: The Ten Penetrations. Sutra, Chapter Twenty Eight: Ten Spiritual Powers. Commentary, Chapter Twenty Eight: Ten Spiritual Powers. This chapter is the twenty eighth chapter in the Flower Adornment Sutra, which in Chinese has eighty one fascicles. This chapter discusses the ten spiritual powers that Bodhisattvas possess. If Bodhisattvas have these special abilities, Buddhas obviously possess them in full as well. Bodhisattvas acquired these ten spiritual powers through spiritual practice. If Bodhisattvas are capable of such achievements, all sentient beings who bring forth the Bodhi resolve walk the Bodhisattva path and cultivate Bodhisattvas practices. We will obtain these ten spiritual powers. As long as you walk the Bodhisattva path, you will acquire these ten spiritual powers without having to seek for them. As long as you continue to practice, you will realize such a feat. In this drama ending age, many great sages of the drama body and Bodhisattvas in various manifestations appear in the world. To remind us to avoid wrong knowledge and views, and maintain correct knowledge and views, Bodhisattvas cultivate the Bodhisattva practices and acquire these ten kinds of spiritual powers. Should Bodhisattvas avoid revealing their spiritual powers? No. If Bodhisattvas have spiritual powers yet refuse to use them, then what would be the point of having such powers? It would be like a person who is unaware that he has a pearl hidden in his clothes. Consequently, he often goes hungry, unclothed, and homeless. Is he not a pauper? Is this person dissimilar from a pauper if he does not know how to use his precious gem? Bodhisattvas will a spiritual with spiritual powers are analogous to the fellow with the pearl. If people do not have such abilities, they can't use them, even if they wish to. If they have such capabilities, they may readily use them. Many ordinary people who are ignorant, especially those masquerading as Buddhists. All Buddhists who only understand a fraction of the Buddha Dharma never want to investigate the truth. These individuals only know to say whatever everyone else says, rather than to probe the principle behind the others' words. Hence, people take small things and blow them out of the proportion. They claim that people should not possess spiritual powers during the Dharma Ending Age. Such words are just the seeds for the house. If they even know,、uh, even knew as little as one atom's worth of Buddhism, one tiny part of Buddhism, they would avoid carelessly judging and criticizing Buddhism. Buddhism explains truths rather than duplicitous principles, deceptive principles, hypocritical principles of self-deceit, or principles that mislead everyone, including oneself. Buddhism plumbs the depths of truth. One investigates until the truth manifests. The eight divisions of gods and dragons will certainly protect and support truth wherever it exists. Wherever truth exists, the Buddhas of the ten directions will certainly protect and support it. Wherever truth exists, the Bodhisattvas of the ten directions will certainly protect and support it. Thus, as long as you understand the truth, you are a true Buddhist. If you fail to understand the truth and、um, be fuddled and be you parrot whatever anyone claims, then you are quite likely to mislead yourself and others. For what reasons did the Bodhisattva attain these ten spiritual powers? He attained them in order to expediently and cleverly teach and transform sentient beings and. To help all sentient beings bring forth the great body reserve, rather than to follow worldly ways. Ordinary people, on the other hand, wallow in the mire and pursue unwholesome worldly ways, like everyone else. Since everyone else is that way, I'll be the same. That is a confused Buddhist.
what is there to gain from being a deluded Buddhist. The more you learn, the more you become deluded. The more deluded you are, the more foolish you become. You don't know to pursue truth. You fail to recognize true proper dharma. Since you do not recognize proper dharma, you learn heterodox teachings instead. Not only do you study heterodox teachings, furthermore, you slander the proper dharma that is really pitiable. What is proper dharma? What is a heterodox teaching? The proper dharma prevails when one practices according to the Buddha's dharma teachings and vyana. That is, when one of us violating the precepts, one obeys, respects, and maintains the precepts at all times. One refrains from anything that is contrary to the precepts. One only does things that are in accordance with the precepts. This is the path that Bodhisattvas follow. Everyone should learn the Buddha Dharma with this proper frame of mind and refrain from passing the time gossiping. To do otherwise makes one not only unworthy of the label Buddhist, but someone who fails to do anything worthwhile. As people who are studying the Buddha Dharma, we must recognize true Buddhism as opposed to imitation Buddhism. We must support genuine Buddhism. We should correct duplicitous Buddhism so that its followers will understand the proper Dharma in the future. Bodhisattva's intentions are such that they can't bear to see sentient beings fall into the house. Bodhisattvas can't bear to see people who are born as animals or hungry ghosts or tumble into any of the three evil paths. Bodhisattva's intentions are such that whether sentient beings desire it or not, Bodhisattvas teach them the proper drama. Bodhisattvas do not act on their sentimentalities in relating to people. Consequently, they have spiritual powers. If Bodhisattvas have spiritual powers and are able to exercise them, why is there a stigma about ordinary people who attain spiritual powers using them? That's ridiculous. It's utter nonsense. Such a prohibition practically guarantees the extinction of Buddhism's proper drama and outstanding talents. Students of Buddhism must maintain correct knowledge and views whether or not you understand the Buddha Dharma. One must not embrace wrong knowledge and views. Since you have proper knowledge and views, you will accept the genuine Buddha Dharma. Without correct knowledge and views, you will reject the proper Dharma. Hence, with earnest compassion, Bodhisattvas patiently and kindly guide sentient beings until they change. This way, sentient beings really understand, awaken, and practice the drama. This is the Bodhisattva's intent. Bodhisattvas harbor not a trace of selfishness, self-interest, or interest in fishing for fame and repute. Bodhisattvas simply practice honestly, listening to the Buddha's teaching and acting accordingly. Therefore, they are able to attain spiritual powers. There are ignorant Buddhists in the Dharma ending age who claim that no one can possess any spiritual powers during this era. Due to their stu stupidity, they don't see people with spiritual powers. They don't recognize Bodhisattvas with spiritual powers even if they see them. As the Chinese say, mistaking what is before your face, you narrowly miss your opportunity. Furthermore, those bodhisattvas with spiritual powers realize that such people have erroneous ideas and improper views, so they will not teach them. We should turn our light within and reflect on the ways in which we are flawed. Upon gaining an awareness of that, we should quickly and seriously make the resolve for body. This is the principle behind the ten spiritual powers. All of you good advisors, if any of you have spiritual powers, I would be pleased that you use them. If you incur any offenses from using spiritual powers, I'll shatter your offenses. 
since you claim that you fall into the house if you use spiritual powers. I am willing to go into the house on your behalf. Don't be afraid. Only be afraid that if that you have no spiritual powers. Conversely, don't pretend that you have uh, paranormal abilities when you have none. Don't pretend that you're a bodhisattva following the bodhisattva path. You must practice truthfully. Don't put up a facade. All of you must quickly begin practicing earnestly, walking and taking one firm step at a time. Do not be careless and slapdash Buddhists who merely bide their time. You have to seriously practice so that you become an outstanding individual. By doing that, although you may appear to be practicing like most Buddhists, you will reach the fruition of the path first. Once you realize the fruition of the path, you can then turn around to get friends with whom you have affinities. I'm telling you this in all honesty. During this Dharma ending age, we need people who practice sincerely, who are enlightened, who realize the fruition of sagehood, who practice what they say and attain great wisdom. Sutra, at that time, universal worthy bodhisattva masattva told all other bodhisattvas, disciples of the Buddha, a bodhisattva masattva has ten spiritual powers. What are the ten? Commentary, at that time, universal worthy bodhisattva masattva, a great bodhisattva among all bodhisattvas, told all other bodhisattvas. He announced to all bodhisattvas, disciples of the Buddha, all of you are good disciples within Buddhism, disciples who practice according to the Buddha's teaching. You should know that a bodhisattva masattva has ten spiritual powers. Now let me tell you, what are the ten? What are the ten spiritual powers of a bodhisattva masattva? Sutra, disciples of the Buddha with the wisdom-based spiritual power of knowing others' minds. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva recognizes the very demise de of sentient beings in a tree leocosm. Minds of goodness, minds of evil, expansive minds, narrow minds, immense minds, petty minds, minds that follow birth and death, Minds that do not follow birth and death, minds of heroes, minds of solitarily enlightened sages, minds of bodhisattvas, heroes, minds for practice, solitarily enlightened sages, minds for practice, bodhisattvas, minds for practice, minds for divas, minds of dragons, minds of yakshas, minds of gandavas, minds of asuras, minds of Garudas, minds of Kinaras, minds of Mahoragas, minds of humans, minds of non-humans, minds of beings in the house, minds of animals, minds of those at the place of King Yama, minds of hungry ghosts, minds of sentient beings in various places of Hakshi. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha a great bodhisattva among bodhisattvas uses the wisdom-based spiritual power of knowing others' minds. This spiritual power enables one to know others' minds, their inner thoughts. With this power, one can read others' minds to know what they are thinking and what they want to say. A bodhisattva masattva recognizes the varied minds of sentient beings in a trichilocosm. He knows the minds of those in a tree leocosm. A thousand worlds from a small tree leocosm. A thousand, a thousand worlds from a small tree leocosm. A one thousand small tree leocosm from a medium tree leocosm. One thousand medium tree leocosms from a large. Chilliocosm. Thus, a tree chilliocosm is so named because it represents three multiples of a chilliocosm. Having mentioned chilliocosms thrice, it is a tree chilliocosm. The thoughts of all sentient beings in a tree chilliocosm differ. 
instead of comprehending only the thoughts of all sentient beings on this tiny earth of ours alone, a Bodhisattva knows the thoughts of all sentient beings in an entire tree geolocalism. Let me tell you the reasons now. Since the minds of sentient beings in one world system are this way, the minds in a thousand world systems, a small geocosm, are similar. Are similar. The minds of sentient beings in a medium geocosm are also similar. So generalized, they are simply the categories of good minds and evil minds, as the sutra mentions later. Sentient beings' minds in a thousand large chiliocosms are also about the same. How are they similar? Sentient beings possess minds of goodness, minds of evil. Are they good thoughts or bad thoughts? For example, goodness includes upholding the precepts, cultivating concentration, and developing wisdom. Conversely, evil includes violating the precepts and being subject to greed, anger, and delusion. The three modes of karma generate the ten good deeds and the ten evil deeds. The ten good deeds come from purifying body, mouth, and mind, whereas the ten evils originate from an impure body, mouth, and mind. Expansive minds are vast and great, narrow minds, immense minds. As it is said, the immense mind is all-inclusive, containing the heaven and earth. The narrow, narrow mind is all too exclusive and intolerant. Petty minds. This is when someone says something and you can't stand it. You get so upset that you nearly go insane. This is the mind of pettiness and parsimoniousness. Minds that follow birth and death are the minds of commoners. Minds that do not follow birth and death are the minds of sages. Minds of those who practice the Four Noble Truths of those are those of the hearers. Minds of solitarily enlightened sages, minds of bodhisattvas. This mentions the three vehicles. Hearers minds for practice, solitarily enlightened sages minds for practice, bodhisattvas minds for practice, minds of divas, minds of dragons. Divas in their minds prefer happiness. Dragons enjoy using, using spiritual powers. Why did they become dragons? Because they were faster in with the vehicle and slow with the precepts. It is because they practiced the Mahayana great vehicle drama vigorously, non-stop from morning to night. However, they didn't uphold the precepts. Since they diligently practiced the Mahayana Buddha drama, they became dragons with supernatural abilities. Since they didn't keep the precepts, they turned into animals that have to endure the torture of heated afflictions. Despite, despite their spiritual powers, they're still beasts. This is all because they practiced vigorously but let their precepts fall by the wayside. Minds of Yakshas Yakshas became Yakshas because of their hatred. They also worked hard at their practice, but they didn't uphold their precepts. In short, sentient beings fall and turn into animals because they have violated the Vinaya. Whether you practice as a monastic or lay person, if you breach any of the precepts, you will easily fall and become a beast at the minimum. More severely, you may become a ghost or a hell being. Therefore, people who have received the precepts must observe the precepts strictly. Minds of Gandavas Gandavas are those spirits who sing at the Jade Emperor's court. Once they start singing, the Jade Emperor is overjoyed. Minds of Asuras Asuras favor brute force and ruthless competition. They prefer battling endlessly with others. Minds of Garudas Garudas are great golden-winged punk birds that became birds also because of their hatred. Minds of Kinaras. These are also music spirits at the Jade Emperor's court. Minds of Mahuragas. Python spirits. Minds of humans. Minds of ordinary people. Minds of non-humans, that is, minds of all sentient beings. 
minds of beings in hell, minds of animals, minds of those at the place of King Rama, minds of hungry ghosts, minds of sentient beings in various places of hardship, the minds of beings living in places that are difficult to live. Sutra. Just as a Bodhisattva Mahasattva can discern the limitlessly many different types of minds of sentient beings in one world, likewise he can do so in a hundred worlds, a thousand worlds, a hundred thousand worlds, a hundred million natural types of worlds. He can even discern the minds of sentient beings in worlds as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's first wisdom-based spiritual power of skillfully knowing others' minds. Commentary, just as a Bodhisattva Mahasattva can discern the limitlessly many different types of minds of sentient beings, just as the Bodhisattva Mahasattva having attained the wisdom to penetrate others' minds, distinctly recognizes each and every mind in one world, Likewise, he can do so in a hundred worlds, a thousand worlds, a hundred thousand worlds, a hundred billion Najutas of worlds. He can even discern and very clearly and distinctly know the minds of sentient beings in worlds as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddhas, such a great number of worlds. Translators note the term Ineffably ineffable is the name of one of a series of huge numbers in India. See glossary and chapter 30 of this sutra. Ask Yas for more for information. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's first wisdom-based spiritual power of skillfully knowing others' minds. These are great Bodhisattvas among Bodhisattvas. Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha, with the wisdom-based spiritual power of the unobstructed purity of the heavenly eye, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva sees countless sentient beings in worlds as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He sees infinitely many types of sentient beings, such as beings who die in one place and are born in another. Commentary, Disciples of the Buddha all of you disciples of the Buddha, with the wisdom-based spiritual power of the unobstructed purity of the heavenly eye, the heavenly eye being a spiritual power manifesting from wisdom. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva sees countless sentient beings in worlds as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He sees infinitely many types of sentient beings such as beings who die in one place and are born in another. With his unobstructed celestial eye, he can see clearly at a glance transmigration and the law of cause and effect, how all sentient beings with shatras die here, then are born there, or die in this world, then are born in another world. He can see all these. We must use our wisdom to learn the Buddha Dharma, not our emotions. When we learn the Buddha Dharma using our wisdom, it is the proper Dharma. So learn the Buddha Dharma using our emotions is the ending of Dharma. To protect and uphold the proper Dharma, you must have wisdom and the Dharma selecting eye. If you learn the Buddha Dharma on the basis of, senti uh, of sentiments, then not only will you fail, but the more you learn, the farther you fall. Wisdom is pure, emotions are defied. One would rather enter the house than to give the Buddha Dharma away as a tool of curry favor. In other words, don't be emotional in your learning of the Buddha Dharma. You should be especially clear about this point. I am speaking genuine Dharma for you out of compassion. I don't want to treat others and myself so that not only I will fall into the house, but I will lead others there too. 
It's alright if I alone fall into the house, but I would prefer that other people not follow me in that descent. I speak what I know on the Buddha Sutras. I use my utmost sincerity to propagate the Buddha Dharma. It's up to you as to whether you want to listen. I've already lectured on the Sutras for more than 10 years. You've already listened to Sutras for more than 10 years, yet you still have not obtained any benefit. We will burn our bridges behind us as I will now absolutely speak the truth and actual drama for you. You all should pay special attention and listen. As usual, our three principles are freezing to death, we do not skim, starving to death, we do not beg, dying of poverty, we ask for nothing. We don't beg even if we are dying of poverty. According with conditions, we do not change. We do not change yet accord with conditions. These are the three great principles. It's most glorious if we starve to death as Buddhists. It's most valuable if we sacrifice ourselves for the sake of Buddha Dharma. I am not kidding you. This is the upper part of the marching verses. You should know the rest. We renounce our lives to do the Buddha's work. We mold our destinies to fulfill our basic duty. We rectify our lives to fulfill the Sangha's role. Encountering specific matters, we understand the principles. Understanding the principles, we apply them to specific matters. We carry on the patriarch's single pulse of the mind transmission. We must persevere regardless of the time or environment, never changing our principles or spirit. We must have the aspiration. Freezing to death, we stand tall in the wind. Starving to death, we hold our heads high. We must be Buddhist with a great resolve. We must be Buddhist with backbone rather than spineless Buddhists who fear this and that. We fear nothing.